Rigsters here, back with a IL2 video. Per a comment request, I'm going to be covering the JU 87D3 dive bomber. I'm on the server Wings of Liberty, and I plan on taking off from Valdiska to a depot on the enemy lines at 0408, which is right over here. Now, the JU 87 is a dive bomber. The attacker aircraft. What that means is you climb the altitude and you dive at a steep angle and hopefully not crash. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is in a nutshell. It's also very slow and it does not have retractable landing gear. So it's slow. You can see where this is going. So for that mission, this mission in particular, I'd recommend taking no less than 50% fuel for this aircraft which is 420 liters. Oh wow, now we're really getting dank. So with modifications for this aircraft, I would recommend there's a lot of bomb loadouts. You can do three 250 pound bombs as an example, or you can carry this really big bomb, which is a thousand kilograms. You can also equip additional armor plates if you want. You can also equip a siren, which you have to keep on to activate. You can also do NA tank cannons or machine gun pods. But I would recommend when you're first starting out with this aircraft, if you're going to do a bombing mission, to do the 1000 or the 3250s. Because I was taught and learned that you want either the same bomb weight or at least one of the same bomb. You can also do a 500 pound kilogram, it would also work. But we're going with 1000 because. I'm a bad pilot and I want to make sure I really obliterate whatever it is. So that's how you, that's basically how you customize it in a nutshell. For Bombs Timer, I usually do default, but I've heard you might want to do a little bit of delay. I think for this one, attacking a stationary target, I think it's default's fine. It's snowing out there. So I'm going to put on a white. Winter camo, so it's harder for the enemy to see. So I hit accept there, and I'm going to take off and get going. So on Wings of Liberty, this particular server has one GUI based thing that's very nice. Um, it has map GUI position, so you don't have to worry about navigating. To start this aircraft up, we need to first press E to start the engine and close the canopy with right alt c that's the default binding you can change that to whatever you want and here's where it gets a little tricky for some players i have a custom key binding for this but you want to make sure you have a binding set for the oil radiator which in this case since it's cold in the game do 30 percent and you might be wondering well how do you tell where the temperatures are well when you zoom in on the cockpit here, near the bottom, you have a brown gauge, that is your oil, which usually doesn't overheat on oil. What you more want to watch is the one to the right of that brown sea is the green sea, that is your water coolant uh, temperature. And over here at the top right corner of the gauges, near this feet per minute, or engine revolutions per minute, is K. It does not stand for how swag your dive is or how bad your dive performance is. That is the radiator housing. What you want to do is with a key binding, you want to set your water radiator to at least a bare minimum of 30%. I'm going to do 40 just to be safe. You want to generally close those more when you're diving so you don't overcool the engine, which you can actually do in this game because it's realistic. There is no park and brake. And for engine power in particular, you want to do you want to do no higher than 2400 engine RPM and 1.25 ATA for taking off. The emergency power setting only lasts 1 minute is 2600 and the TA is 1.42, so most of the time you'll be hovering around 2,250 RPM for the engine to 2,400. 
anything higher than that is a lot. <laughs> you don't want to be going beyond that and it can burn out the engine very quickly. So with that in mind, we're going to raise the engine RPM. I'm going to put it to say, let's say 70% is good for taxiing. Maybe 80% since we're really heavy. 70 to 80% is usually what I recommend if you could adjust, could adjust the RPM for taxiing so it's not too sensitive. Now it does have a tail wheel, so you got to keep that in account. So you got to do the wheel brakes to prepare for taxiing. In this case, it's an open grass field, so we're just going to taxi just a little bit. And just to get ourselves lined up near the open this right there. And then since we're carrying a really heavy bomb, I'm going to actually lower the flaps. There is three positions. There's takeoff, and I think there's landing, and then retracted. You know, if we want takeoff when you're carrying heavy fuel loads and heavy bombs, because it, otherwise you're not going to get off the ground. So what you do is... Oh! Gotta wait a moment, because there is an aircraft over there. Alright, now we can start gradually increasing the throttle, because he landed. So I just gotta gradually take this off. Climb mode is okay, because that's what we want. So we want to keep increasing that throttle pressure. I'm on takeoff mode, do 100%. Sometimes you have to really increase the power here. Oh. Uh, this is a little bit tricky here. There we go. And sometimes you have to be really aggressive with the throttle. <laughs> and this aircraft to get it airborne because it's very sluggish. Because there's so much drag and stuff. So now we just gradually increase back pressure just a little bit so we can get a little further off the ground. And retract the landing gear. Or, not the landing gear. I'm so used to saying retract the landing gear. You retract the flaps so you can gain some more speed. That's why you want to climb just a little bit. To gain some speed. And then we can reduce the engine power just a little bit. And the throttle. There we go, now we're in continuous mode. I think 75, 75 is okay, but sometimes my janky joystick goes to 76 because it has a bunch of its own. <laughs> so, let's see here. It's in terms of kilometers, so we're not really going that fast. But at least we're getting somewhere. As I'm gradually doing a gradual climb here, this aircraft defensively has a rear machine gunner and just like with any rear machine gunner as I'm gradually doing this climb here is you can bark out orders to it if you have nobody else in the cockpit so you can hit right alt 1 you can do gunner's fire at will another option is if you hit the Matilda you can do that here and hit F3 and you can also do F1 to the engagement and you can hit like F2, far range, or close range. I never use close range, I usually use normal or far. So we're going to do normal. Just like that. So now the gutter is set. So if you hear the gutter firing, there's somebody behind you. Unless you have a human player saying that. If they happen to be in your aircraft. You can close it too if you don't want people being in your aircraft. We just level off of stuff shift A to show you. Press escape and go to gutter station. Oh. What happened? Oh, that was strange. Oh. The mission ended. <laughs> okay, well. Um, that was kind of hilarious. I guess apparently I waited too long to do anything. Okay, well. Let's try this again. So, I would take off from Gordon Voicey and go after the 
port. And let's clip this out here. Let's see what the weather's like outside. It is summer. So we need to change the camo to there. And we'll keep the same load. Additional armor plates, 50% fuel, contact fuse, and 1,000 pound bombs. And we'll make our way towards 0818. Just like before, press E to start the engine, close the canopy, set the cool factor to higher. Because now we're in the summer, so we need like 40% oil. And let's see here, about 60% mm, water radiator. That was kind of funny. And lower the flaps to take off. Perfect. All right, so this time around, I'm going to do 85% engine RPM and get going. There we go. Now we got the engine RPM up. Now we can get going. Hopefully this time I can actually demonstrate some of the dive bombing too. The server apparently was at the end of what it was trying to do. It does take quite a while for this aircraft to uh, get going and taken off the ground. Sometimes you have to push the nose just slightly over and then push up once it reaches enough speed. Sometimes it'll do it on its own too, so it's not like too hard to pull up on. Just have to be, I guess, a little, give it a little scruff there. There we go. Now we're up in airborne. Just have to carefully get off the ground here. Increase the throttle pressure. There we go. Sometimes you have to really play around with these settings. That's what I've noticed. And now we retract the flaps. Now I should be able to do a gradual slow climb. Oh boy. It really wants to go down to the ground again. Oh man, we're just above tree line again. Sometimes it and heavier aircraft or planes that aren't fighters, it takes a while to get used to the fact that when you release those flaps, it really drops the lift. Oh, oh you gotta be kidding me. I lost connection. Okay. Maybe I'll maintain connection this time around. Sometimes the game does do that, I've noticed. It's kind of frustrating. It's like, gee, many. So, same setup 50% fuel, additional armor plates, and one 1,000 pound bomb. Alright, let's try this again. So, start the engine, close the canopy, raise the RPM to. I think 80% this time around. Lower the flaps to take off and wait for it to start here. And then also, of course, you know, make sure the water radiator is open to like 60% and the oil to like 45%. Alright, now it can gradually increase. The power. Let's go to 85%. Let's see if we can finally take off and actually do a bombing run this time. Gee, my knees. At least we had to get one good action of this plane. Maybe we should increase the power a little more. To like 90%. There we go. Now we can get airborne. Come on. Oh my goodness. This aircraft takes forever to get off the ground. There. Now we're airborne. I just have to ease up on the pressure. And increase the altitude just a little bit. 
And then race the what flaps? I always keep saying race the landing gear because I'm so used to doing that. Ay ay ay. Alright. Well, as long as I get a connection this time around. Let me get some altitude first. So basically, I'm gonna do that Matilda key thing while I've, I remember here. Gunners and fire low. There we go. I got the gunner set. Now I should be able to do a little bit more of a climb, I guess. <laughs> Let's see here. Perfect. Now I should get some altitude. The altitude uh, altimeter is near this compass looking icon right here. That's in terms of kilometers. The zero means in terms of like uh, tens of thousands or kilometer equivalent of tens of thousands of feet, I think. No, it's just, you know, I'm less than a one big kilometer off the ground of like 5.500 kilometers off the ground. Since I don't know metric very well, I don't know what that is in feet, but it's pretty low to the ground. <laughs> it's too low to do a dive bombing. So I press O key here. You can see my little plane icon on the map that updates. So to show you it updates a bit as I fly. That is the difference on Wings of Liberty. It's a little or a new pilot or navigationally challenged pilot's best friend. So you can see where you're at more often. The only reason I'm doing this too is just so I could get like a good arcadey bomb run in. Just to showcase the Stuka for a little while and what I was taught and learned from a IL-2 player. He was very passionate about the Stuka and is very good at it. He taught me quite a lot about it. And I'm very grateful for it, so I'll share that knowledge. And hopefully I can make him proud of at least showing him and showing people what this plane can do. It is kind of comical though that it took me like three tries to get to this point. <laughs> Ideally for dive bombing, you want to be at least one kilometer or higher off the ground so you can go at a steeper angle. Let's check our temperature. Oh, we need to make the water radiator even more open, like 75%. And the oil, let's do 60. There we go. We're still on engine climb power mode. If I level off just a little bit with left shift A, should get a little bit more speed out of it. Hopefully. And then press O here, I can see I'm nearing the port. And also, one interesting thing with this aircraft, it has a buzz bomber. Oh, not buzz bomber, whoop. Buzz timer. If you see near the kilometers, there's this clock looking thing. This is in terms of meters, whoop. I don't want to turn on my nav lights, oh gosh. Um, you can adjust when the timer goes off. In this case, I want it to go off at 800 meters, I think. Yeah, or 820. Because we're only at like a kilometer above the ground. Maybe just in case, uh, with left, right shift K, we should do like 920. And maybe if I get enough uh, altitude here by doing like a quick climb here. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to have enough leeway. Basically it just is a buzzer to remind you that you got to pull up. So I'm going to climb as high as I can with the given speed I got. Unfortunately I already could get to like almost 1.5. Press O here. Now I can keep on quiet mode for 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes the engine will quit. And it's definitely not been 30 minutes of flight time. Could also probably 
raised the engine RPM to like 85%. So I can get a little more speed. Don't want it to go much faster than that. And this point has a very weird dive brake system. Like, when you dive in, you press the air brake key, it'll enter an auto dive sequence. And then what it will do is you pull up after you drop your bomb. And that's why you want to carry one bomb or the same because you can create an aerodynamic imbalance that creates problems. So, let's do... Let's do 1,000 meters, or 1,010 meters for their binder. No, actually that's too high, so let's do 880. There we go. Let's see what the coin is. Coin is good. I'm almost near the port. Uh, if I hold hit the O key here, you can see the little point icon right here. I'm at sector 0917, so I have to turn into the port soon. Ideally, the higher you are, the more time you have to adjust your dive, but also the longer it takes for your dive to complete. But the steeper you can go as well. Obviously, I want to try to get a little higher. And one tip I did learn from the same person that taught me this is if you have you have to set a key binding or a joystick binding for this yellow yeah, trimmer you want to set to zero so your plane doesn't sway too much when you're going at a steep dive because usually that's not a problem trim wise but when you're diving really steep if your yaw is off too much while you're diving or can fluctuate it'll be off target so I want to try to get a little bit higher Alright, I see the port. The port is down over here. And if I hit N, I think it's N. Yep, you can see there is a hole right here. You can look down through, which is kind of cool. So what I want to do is gain just a little bit more speed and climb a little higher. There we go. Now that we climb there. Okay. And let's hit O again. Let's get some more speed so I can climb even higher. Okay. Let's see here. Landing this aircraft once you drop your bomb is actually relatively straightforward since it has such a low speed and flight characteristics, it's actually really good at low speed. Just not necessarily when you're carrying a bomb. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm just trying to gain just a little more altitude so I have more time to initiate the dive and stuff. I'm gonna get up there. Okay. Alright, so now I press O here, I'm over there, okay. Now we'll do a sweeping turn here. Well, oh, trying to climb and gain altitude a bit. Port's down that way. So what I want to do is while I'm climbing here to coordinate my turn with the rudder, keep that ball near the center. So it doesn't uh, flip flop around too much. And he's up there. And now we slow down the plane to 0% throttle. And we close up the water radiator to almost nothing. Same thing with the oil to almost nothing or zero. And now we start diving down and reducing engine RPMs to, to like 50%. We're going steep. Deploy the air brakes. Got dive entry here. Now we're going really steep. Air brake released. Good. Alright, right around here. Now we're in dive recovery mode. Throttle up. 
and retract the air brakes. There we go, it says dive brakes up. Whoops. Oh, I think I damaged myself or AA hit me. Ah, the AA hit me. I don't know how much damage I have. Oh, oh gosh, the AA is really nasty at the port. Oh no. But we successfully hit the target. I'm just gonna fly over it. But that's what can happen. And it got blown up. Unfortunately, AA in this particular server is nastier than expected, but we were successful in bombing the targets. So I hit f uh, finish spectate. I'm gonna wrap this up here. You go to statistics. And as you can see, right here, we got seven facilities destroyed and one vehicle transport destroyed for 14 points, but uh, I died. So, when attacking the port, apparently, they're much more heavily defended than one would think. So, I also run a co fi page with the goal of getting a better flight stick so I have better control for aircraft. And I don't just make IL2 content, I also love cars and all sorts of other vehicles. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.